It's the Brothers Geek Out podcast, and this is another Geek Out session for you guys. And I've got a special guest on today. I want to introduce Timo to you guys, and I'm going to let him do like a WWF intro for himself. I want to hear what you do, dude. Go for it. <laughs> right. Uh, I've been creating videos for God knows how long since I got a camera on my my flip phone and uh, stopped for years. Came back to it. TikTok blown up uh yeah it's a chance it's a great platform to to show how much of a geek you are and and everyone loves it fantastic community it's how i found you you found me luckily both went to the same movie premiere yep, yeah we did we That's did that jammed yeah. it, is, it is it is i met tim well so originally I, I i saw his videos on tiktok uh he does these awesome location videos for anything geeky when it comes to star wars marvel dc stuff like that so ongoing fandom but we actually physically physically got to meet at the Mor- morbius premiere fan premiere and that was uh yeah an interesting one but it's always experience. a great experience yeah definitely always a great experience because <laughs> you get them i never thought that i could jump on a platform like tiktok and end up meeting so many cool people that I, like usually with facebook and instagram I never actually physically got to meet people when they followed you. But now we're lucky enough to go to these events where we can like, oh man, I know your video, I know who you are. And yeah. it just all interlinks and it's it's created a great community at the moment, which really excites me the most because we're all in this together and we get to enjoy that fandom really well. Yeah. Uh, just yeah, unbelievable. But with the work that you've done with 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 your page at the moment now. And I know we briefly touched on it. Like, what made you just say suddenly I'm gonna do I'm gonna do location hunting? Right. So uh, I have been a film extra, and okay. I just started to like I can't unsee it now. Everywhere I go, I can I know when there's a film film in there. Yeah. And I'm like, right, this is an interesting spot. Or where I live. Uh, funny story. Um, I was like, something's happening around here. So I live near Stonehenge, like, uh-huh. like in such a site. But around it is Salisbury Plain with the army train. And I was like, why are they digging trenches around here? And I was mm. like, oh, what's going on? And then uh, I got an email saying, are you interested to be in a war movie? And I was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, right. And I was trying to figure out what it is because they, they they have like project names. And I was like, yeah, oh, okay. I could like, I moved closer to it. Like at the time I was living uh, in Andover, which is further away from it, but they were filming in Salisbury Plain, which I can walk to that site now, or that film set. Um, I was like, right, trenches, right. What war is that? And I was like, it could be Napoleonic. They started to use trenches, maybe. Uh, yeah, it was 1917. I got the email, booked my time off work. They said, I didn't need you. Week before they went, we want you again. I was like, I've just canceled my leave from work. <laughs> I missed out on an Oscar winning film to just oh. play around as a soldier. <laughs> uh, and then from then I have not gone back to being a film extra because I'm very annoyed at that. But other stuff, um, Detective Pikachu, I was in, I was in that. That was uh, was filmed at Leaden Hall building. But yeah, yeah that, that, started, that started it off in my mind, but I didn't start until last year. So May the 4th, May the 4th be with you. <laughs> I was like, posted one video, it did okay. Second one, viral, and I was like, okay, there are people asking, can you do like, you know, Grimsby? Can you do uh, Manchester? And then that's it. That's how it just kind of asks it. So now snowball, the, the doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's a snowball effect. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, the extra stuff, I, I, I've had my my fair two shares on the big screen. I did, yeah. well, actually, I don't, I'm not, I can't even remember. I was in a short movie that was played at the Rain Dance Film Festival. I think this is about 10. Uh-huh. Looking at 10 years ago almost, and it was for like a, a romantic comedy. Uh, and I played a one-eyed, uh, one-eyed thug, one-eyed thug. So I, I, at the time I was pretending to be Samuel L. Jackson as, a, as, as Nick Fury. Uh, yeah. But I just played this guy at the bus stop that just was like a, a crazy guy, uh, which was absolutely hilarious. And then I did a film with, oh, it was called Legacy. I'm trying to remember the actor's name and it's gone right out of my head, but went to Pinewood Studios and they used their cafeteria as one of the movie scenes. Uh, and, I, and I played a waiter like rushing around in the kitchen. Uh, oh my God, his name is going to kill me now. Like Basically, so it was, it's, it's, it was produced by No Clock. Uh, 
the actor's name, he was in Attack of the Blocks. It wasn't it wasn't Moses. It wasn't uh, uh, John Boyega. Uh, he had short right. hair. He played. He was in Legends of Tomorrow, and he played. Was it Firestar? Not Firestar. Uh, right, Legacy film. No Clark. Sorry, I got a cheat card. No yeah. I'm like IMDb. I'm like, yeah, okay, just give me what they look like. But for a film like that, I'm sorry, I don't know. Right. Uh, yeah, it was it, it it was it was one of his later f- films that he produced and uh Fran Strammer? He was an attacker block. Uh, I think so. It could be you know what? Now that now you now you've got me. Fran Strammer. Sorry guys, we've we've done it with two <laughs> film geeks, which I actually have to use Google for this. I know. Uh okay. Fran Strammer. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, I think yeah, because yeah, yeah, he was in Legends of Tomorrow and he yeah, played yeah. I can't remember the character's name, but yeah, that was that was my 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 moment. But uh, no, that's amazing though. But the, the fact that you missed out on that big movie, that movie was oh, amazing. No, I, I, you know what? Guilty, I haven't watched it. Oh my god, I, I, I should be positive, <laughs> but because of that, I have not watched it. Um, the, the talent on that movie it, it's phenomenal. It's like, it's yeah. like I remember taking my dad to watch it, and he was like, This, this is intense because of the way they shot it and how it was. It really made you like in that. I think in I think that also, moment, um, because I was in a, uh, I was in oh, uh, Amazon Prime slash ITV's Vanity Fair, but mm. I had to go to boot camp for this. I was like a Napoleonic soldier, so yeah, I had to wear the red coat, musket fire, and wicked. And <laughs> I made loads of lifelong friends there. And I found out my best mate from there was in the trenches, and I could have been with him, so it would have oh. been that camaraderie. So, like, mate, if he died on screen, we would have been in the background crying, like, <laughs> we would have gone full on. Like, oh, that's. But, that's, oh. Yeah, so they uh, they physically like uh, personally attacked me by getting me off the movie and asked me to go on again. And I got asked to go on to uh, it's not the Band of Brothers sequel, but there's yeah. uh, Steven Spielberg's doing another one. Okay, um, it's like oh, God, it's, it's like uh, it's like basically the Air Force version of Band of Brothers. All right, okay, interesting. Um, okay, got asked to go on that similar thing. Mm. Three of these dates, they've changed them, and I uh, just like I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a bit. If I wasn't in a day job, yeah, I would be like... It's difficult. It's very difficult. Yeah. And I'm lucky enough, if my manager's listening, when he does listen to the podcast anyway, thank you very much, dude, for like always encouraging me and helping me. He's, he's probably one of the best managers I've ever had uh, and really encouraging in what I do and, you know, gives me the time that I need. But I work for a good company that kind of works both ways. So bless him. Uh, but I know how hard it, it, it was when, we, when I was in a nine-to-five job that didn't get the time that I needed to get off and projects I wanted to jump on. And yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from on that one. I mean, uh, yes, time I won't be uh, nine to five. Let's see. No, that's it. I heard yeah. you, you're, you're working on loads of things. And uh, there was one thing that intrigued me as well, because you've started something new recently and, and you said, Oh, you're working with forbidden planets. And I was like, Oh, yeah, actually I got it. Yeah. Tell, tell me. Always, always about. Right. <laughs> so uh, biodegradable glitter company, because I'm, Big fan of festivals. It was a yeah. t-shirt company, pivoted. Um, Hatsune Miki. So all the anime fans, you might know this. Right. Uh, yeah. The first eco-friendly anime glitter ever. Awesome. So, That's amazing. Ego and Forbidden Planet. Uh, I'm still waiting for them to put it in their store, but they've got the stock. Given them the invoice, it's going to be out anytime soon. Probably oh, awesome. That's amazing. Uh, and HMV are interested as well. So that's it. And um we are thinking of other products, but trying not to. Well, Marvel's expensive. I can't. I can't afford that yet. Maybe like, <laughs> you know, can I swear on this? I don't know. Of course like, you can, dude. Yeah, Scarlet this is Bitch open. <laughs> uh, will be one of our mixes in the future. We were awesome. thinking of like Doctor Odd and okay. like, you know, fun, fun mixes like it yeah. can capture that audience. But yeah, the cosplay market is awesome. Um, it is. Yeah, it um, is. It is. We, we are getting interest from other like smaller anime um, sort of brands as well. Which awesome. Wanna, get into glitter which is a very very odd but yeah it's fun oh, no, that's, that's, that's adventures. very 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 cool you're gonna be going to any of the comic cons this year uh mate, I've, I've got no time i should i wanted to go to mcm which is next week yeah no that's yeah but, it's, um probably uh, i think there's one in october isn't there there's one in october and then you've got london film and comic con there's a couple that's like in wales and up in liverpool which they've got i, like I this, should go yeah um, so i prefer to go with a crew rather than by myself no, no, that's that's, that's all, it's always nice. I actually the opposite. Uh, I stopped going with crews because I never got to 
do the things I wanted to do. So I ended up saying, you know what, guys, I'm just going to go by myself. And if I see you along the way, yeah. we'll grab some lunch. Oh, and that's right. Yeah. So, but I'm my, my, my thing was that if I, if there's going to be like an exclusive artist or somebody that I wanted to meet, then I want to spend that time with that artist. So I can not just, I want to get my yeah. comic book signed. And I really want to have that moment to geek out with them and say, you know, like, you know, what inspired them, how they got into it. And, you know, me teaching art to our, like two other students, like, you know the processes and cons yeah. and stuff like that and people trying to get into the industry like because i know how oversaturated we are and like it was a conversation i was having with another guest about how science fiction comics and all of this like is, is it come to a time now where it's oversaturated because i enjoy the content no matter what i'm going to be a fanboy but yeah. do you feel like things are being rushed to get out so quickly and i know we had covid to kind of give it a pit stop but like this year, when you look at the roster, we've got so much coming out. Spoiled. Like, yeah, we are. Absolutely we've got spoiled. we've got spoiled. And then I've seen all the stuff on TikTok and online on T on Twitter where the bar is set up so high for some of these movies. And when we do go to see them, we're like, uh, I mean, Morbius um, is a perfect uh, yeah. example. Oh, <laughs> to be politically, you know, um, nice. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So like, the pandemic's changed my mind of things. Mm. Because everyone's on TikTok. Like I, I used to look at reviews before I watch a film. If I, because uh, it, it skews your your view of it. Doctor Strange is a great example. I didn't want to look at reviews. I went in, go in with not a Marvel mindset. Go in, you're going to the cinema as a film. That's right. Yeah. Okay? It's not the That's comic. Right. You're not going to read another issue of you know, right. yeah. standing comic series. Go in. So I treated it as like, oh my god, this is like a Sam Raimi film. Yeah, I like treat it like that. I have, I enjoyed it. I loved it. Um, it was funny. It was scary. Yeah. Like, there were some moments I was just like, I oh, know it's going to jump, but then it's, it's not going to be like scary enough. But I, I was like, yeah, oh, I loved it. It worked. Okay. It worked. I think, I think it's a, you know, like Marvel are taking much more risk in the movies that, and the TV shows that they, they have brought out recently. Uh, and I've been enjoying the journey, uh, not expecting much as a fan. You know, I was that guy originally when the, when it started, I was the guy that used to say, oh, shit, that doesn't look like the comic book. And they didn't do this and they yeah. didn't do that. And then when I saw Avengers, I was like, holy shit, they're yeah. creating their own universe. And then it made me fall in love with those, the, the first phase again, because it was like, I can't bring my comic book mind into this world. Yeah. I need to see this for something it is itself. And that's when I started falling in love with it. Yeah. Uh, saying that, like, Star Wars has, has a crazy crazy community because mm -hmm. it's only it's really the movies are like the foundation everyone just oh, it's, it's so tough it's, it's there's loads of like straw hat goofy never touched star wars because of the whole culture i think he did one video on it i think even then it was just it's a difficult one i mean to get one creator that the biggest film top creator to mm. not talk about it because of the culture but i think it's going to improve i think obi-wan's going to bring everyone together Yes, I, 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 I'm so excited. I mean, I'll be honest, with uh, Dave Filoni and John Favreau jumping on, you know, like The Mandalorian and Book yeah. of Boba, and really, I think, Mandal I think Mandalorian did reignite love for Star Wars again, dramatically. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. I mean, Star Wars is the one that started it all, all, all off, you know. This is the, the main thing for science fiction fans that kicked it all off. I mean, is this your main fandom? Is it, is it Star Wars for you? Uh, I think, yeah, like, I think, yeah, since I was four, like, one of my earliest memories of, like, proper cinema was, uh, yeah, I'm talking the 90s now. So <laughs> but I remember watching, oh, I was too young to watch. I don't know why my dad let me in to see it. Lost World, right? <laughs> oh, Jurassic yeah. Park, Lost World, <laughs> which was, like, it was basically like the multiverse of madness for dinosaurs. It was like, fine, we're just throwing everyone. Vince Ford, you go in, Jeff <laughs> Gordon, like, and every dinosaur you know, yeah, just thrown it in this movie. And like it was it's quite visceral. And then Men in Black came out the same, uh no, a couple of years after. I don't know, my, I don't know my, my movie knowledge for that no, is skewed, it's all good. But um, yeah, and I remember I going to my mate's house. I never watched Star Wars. So this is my first wow. experience watching Star Wars, and it was the return of the Jedi. And we were watching it, recreating the scene on the barge. He had his lightsabers, you know, like the crap. Plastic. I actually got one there. I haven't got one of these cool force effects ones. This is my like old one. 
Yeah, we were just playing it, and that was it. I was just like, I want to be Luke Skywalker. That's it. I was just in love. And Han Solo, still oh. my favourite characters. Um, yeah, that, and then from there, I was just like, yeah, 100%. Always Spider-Man as well. Spider-Man's mm -hmm. my favourite. But yeah, Star Wars is my my go-to. It's like, even if those videos flop on, on TikTok, I don't care. I enjoy it. It's it's my escapism. So Yeah, no, I think that's what the main the main thing is, is that escapism. I think... Yeah. Uh, a conversation I had recently and it's actually with my father because he he really doesn't get the fandom that me and my brothers have and my little sister uh, and I was like you know we get it from you like he's a big fan of like spaghetti western movies and that's all I watched when I was oh, growing up yeah. and I was like you watch like samurai movies and you know Star Wars and like movies in the 80s kind of kicked it off for us you gave us mm. the catalogs of movies you kind of embedded that in us and pop culture as well. And he just didn't get, he didn't understand it. And I was like, dad, it's like, you know, if I was to be a smoker or a drinker or someone who takes drugs, you know, that's a form of escape, like escaping yeah. for that moment. You gave us pop culture. And he didn't like to take the blame for that. Yeah. I was like, dad, it's not a bad thing. It's a great thing. He was like, dad, he goes to me, Kibbs, you are 40 years old and you still wear superhero t-shirts. And I'm like, Okay, you maybe have a different dress sense at that time than than I have now, but you know, I don't know. It's just I like wearing. It's my fandom. It's what I enjoy. It's what That's I it. love. Like, and it's no different, right, to people that love football. So yeah. like, just literally, it's like a copy and paste format. They'll be wearing a football shirt in the back. It'll be like not Iron Man, it'll be Ronaldo or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's yeah. it. And it's it's another thing you can go to another bloke and be like. Hey, you know Spider Man? Yeah, yeah. Which one's your favourite? <laughs> like, that's just that's it. Like, did you watch that movie? Which is the same as a match. That's it. So that's I, exactly yeah. I used to try and like like everything. I used to try and like like football, but then with sport, it's like it's football, but it's not just football. You have got Formula One. You got all this. Mm. I was like, nah, I'm just gonna stick with movies now. That's it. <laughs> I used to be gaming, and that's how my TikTok channel was started. I wanted, ah. to, be, I wanted to be a Twitch gamer. Oh man, I was trying for years. It's not working. I was like. I'm not, I'm not, I can't compete. I'm just gonna, you know, I've been a film extra. I started to share those stories. I started to share just my reviews and then mm. locations took off and like, that's, that's a good hub. And yeah, this is it. And uh, nah, I started I... film as well. Yeah. And yeah, as I said, I used to make, um, I used to make movies as well on YouTube, like literally lightsaber movies. So oh, back in 2000, sick. when did it come out? 2009, my mate yeah. had, I was like, he had, oh, what was it called? Final Cut Pro. So every frame, he used to cut it. That's right. I yeah. can do that now on my phone. It's mental. So cool. It's so cool, like, how far that we've, like, oh. we've come. Because I studied media studies in college. I didn't go university. Mm. Uh, but film has always played a big part of my life, I think. And then, as I said, like, my, I said, Dad, you inspired that for us because that's why we love this this stuff. It's like, it's ingrained in us right now because you are, you're a fan of pop culture, but you just don't want to say it. And I found a cinema, we've just kind of embraced that more, like, as you said, like a football team supporter would yeah, be. That's it. Yeah. Uh, but no, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing with the work that you've done recently as well. And there's going to be more to come. But like you, like, where, where, I mean, for the listeners, like, because I know how much hard work goes into this, having a family as well and trying to piece it all together like what is it that inspires you to kind of motivate you to keep going like i'm doing this i'm doing this i'm doing this uh right so for tiktok it's the community man like yeah. uh probably like it's, it's, it's like there's actually you get hate comments right that's 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 absolutely normal but then you know that's that's their issue it's not mm -hmm. yours that's right um it's not feedback it's just they they're having a bad day mm -hmm. they're taking on you but that you know that doesn't actually stop me at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I talk about it on my podcast as well, like yeah, for careers, but um, but no, what drives me? It's just the community, it's just like I know there are, especially with Instagram. So I, I move the TikTok audience to, to Instagram, yeah, and I love it. I, I you do the stories and stuff, and people interact. And I've got I've got people that like they're not they're not friends because I don't know them enough. Like you're an exception because like, mm. you know, we talk to each other pretty much every day, like, we yeah. Communicate. Then there's people which always waiting for me my next post and they always like say first and things like that. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah. that point, and you're just like, 
oh, you, you start to see the, the same profile picture pop up. And I just love that. I love, like people are tuning in, like it's like I'm a TV channel and that's just. Of course, it's amazing. That's, that's, yeah, I don't want to let them down, but then yeah. I don't have any other hobbies. This is it. This is, I'll make TikToks. Uh, and I'm trying to, to spread out into YouTube, but that's, that's a bit harder because it's, it's, I have to edit it and all of that but uh, i'm getting there so don't forget to subscribe to me on youtube <laughs> make sure you do guys all the links are in the description yeah, guys um, and if you're listening on a podcast streaming then make sure you read the description it's all in there all the info's in there I'm make sure, sure you go follow make sure you do no seriously it's all about sharing the love and and putting it out there now that's what i learned on tiktok as well because i only joined late i think it was like last year summer i think i was a bit late okay, on it and i i mean the, as you said the community it's it's just mad when you see that first comment and somebody actually says they're first to comment on it they are literally yeah. waiting to see what you're, you're you're getting next but then i've met people across the world that are following the journey as well and the the, the things that they ask and it's like oh yeah i feel like i know you yeah i think you've been watching my videos too much uh yeah. but they they're, they're eager and they, they want to know more they want to see your knowledge and recently yeah. I'm late on this as well. I've only started stitching videos more often in the past month. And there's a couple of creators that I stitch with and I realized, oh, you know what? That's actually really helped me engage with their followers as well. Because Mm. the comment sections, I think the engagement is the most important part of social media anyway, because it will help help push your post. But the negative ones are the best ones because that's the ones that just take it over the roof. Yeah, I don't know what video it was. I did one of these trends and it was controversial opinion. I said Squid Game was better than Stranger Things, but then, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, it caused it caused contra- controversy because we oh. have, Stranger Things is coming to an end. I love it. I'm not saying mm-hmm. I'm hating it, but Squid Game, like if they get season two right, that uh, will be really good because uh, Mr. Beast took it off. And but, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, yeah no. Stranger Things anyway. Next next week, blimey. We've oh, got so big much week next week for fans. Yeah, we, we, we've got we, we've got some great content coming coming to us. So we've got Stranger <sighs> Things, we've got Kenobi, and then yeah, it's hard Top to Gun. keep up because the, yeah, oh my god, Top Gun. Oh my you god. You were there, weren't you? <laughs> it was nuts. It was nuts. So they did so they, as I said, like yesterday, they invited me to the, the royal premiere as well, and I couldn't do it uh, because what that? so I said yes to Kenobi. Then I said I was going to do the podcast with you. And then they sent me a last minute email. Like, everything comes so last minute. But luckily, oh, the day before, I got yeah, to man. see like a multimedia screening of it. And if, you know what? 36 years later, I don't know how Tom does it. But I got so much love for that dude. He's crazy in all, all sorts of ways. But he really, that film was awesome. It was, it was shot great because you're using IMAX cameras and you're watching all of these fighter planes there's not there's a small amount of cgi but you're actually seeing these guys fly yeah and the action scenes were just intense and again something that i saw that only i've seen at marvel or some dc movies where it ends up look like feeling like a football match people are cheering people are screaming and i was like oh my god i feel like i'm in a marvel movie because we mm-hmm. since infinity wars the crowds have gone mad in the cinemas so when you see a new cameo, when you see a new action scene and you see the, the interaction in the crowd, I think movies have come to that level now. Like I remember when, when, when Cap threw the hammer and caught it, I was probably one of the first person to jump up and scream when everybody else joined in after. And it was like a, a wave of screams oh, after. It's your cinema. Mine's, it's me. Like, you know, when... <laughs> Um, oh, I don't know. I, I don't want to give spoilers because maybe people haven't watched it. Fuck it, right? Doctor Strange. Like... Spoilers, spoilers. Come on. It's been right, almost a month. Spoilers, 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 spoilers. <laughs> right. That's enough time. Right. John uh, Krasinski came up and I was like, oh, I'm all that. I was like, no, no one, no one knows. <laughs> uh, but I tell you what, um, the audience makes the film as well. So That's right. The best film experience I had it was um, I was in Cyprus and I was watching the movie 300, and Greeks are fucking proud of their heritage, right? Yeah. It was the bit Leonidas, loads, loads of arrows have hit his shield, and he uh, and he breaks him off. And just before he broke him off, I'm guessing this guy's watched it three times. Stood up went, ah, and broke off at the same time, and everyone started cheering. And I was like, "Wow!" 
This is this is cinema. Like. Oh, it's brilliant. It's it's engaging now, much more engaging. A great movie as well, bro. It's one of Zack oh, Snyder's best I, movies. I, I haven't watched number two yet, and I've been told not to. Um, I don't want to ruin it. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I, I'll tell you now. Just leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave yeah, leave it. I, like, I watched that cinema twice. It was so good. Yeah, I think I did it a couple of times as well. I remember there was an MCM Comic Con where Frank Miller was, uh, I think it was, it was a couple of years ago, nine, I think nine, no, three, four years ago, he came to the MCM Comic Con. I, I got the tickets last minute and then the BBC invited me to say that, uh, you know, Frank Miller's going to be there. Would you like to go interview him and the rest of it? And I, lucky enough, I got to sit with him and talk about like 300 and the adaptation onto the big screen, you know, The Dark Knight. And when he did his runs on Wolverine with Marvel and it's like, it, amazing guys. Like, I, it, it inspires me so much that my guy is almost 80 years old and still drawing and still writing comic Man, books. And it's it. just amazing. And like his enthusiasm when uh, I remember... I, he was signing a couple of my comic books and like, his ink was running out. And then I, I gave him one of my pens and I was like, I'll use it because you've got a shitload of fans to sign for. And he was like, no, 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 keep it. I'll get one of my guys to help out. And I was like, just keep it, man. If you gave me this, I, I can only give you this pen back to help out the rest of the fans. Uh, it was absolutely like a, a really surreal super moment. And uh, more to come, dude, because, you know, I think the UK comic cons are getting bigger now where we're getting the people that we follow in our fandom go into them. Like I miss when Loki went to MCM Comic Con. I'm kind of gutted about that one, but Tom Hiddleston, sorry, not Loki. Oh my God. That's, yeah. that's how, that's how like they've embodied those characters that I wouldn't even see. Like if I was to see Robert Downey Jr., the first thing would come out of my mouth is like, oh my God, that's fucking Iron Man. <laughs> uh, I feel like, yeah, like Chris Evans, Captain America, but it depends what they do outside of it as well or, or mm. before they do it because sometimes I like Sean Bean will always be sharp for me um, <laughs> or Boromir yeah uh, but but yeah more mainly sharp oh shit sharp <laughs> <laughs> big no. sharp fan so <laughs> that's brilliant that's absolutely brilliant that's absolutely brilliant but with uh your current work at the moment you've got any sneak peeks of anything coming up soon or so much stuff yeah i um because of like the success of all these styles locations i've actually put wrote i i wrote them all down mm -hmm. and now i've just turned it into a bucket list poster awesome yeah so awesome. like it's fun for me because i need to go to tunisia i need to go to uh guatemala i need to like i need to get to all these locations oh, and uh, now it's just available for anyone to buy um, awesome and you can scratch it off so yeah, it's got some beautiful artwork behind it as well. So you can scratch it off. You know, like you've got this hundred movie bucket list thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Star Wars locations. That's awesome. Um, That's really cool. Uh, for legal reasons, I haven't called it Star Wars. Star Wars locations. It's called. I totally Star understand. Star totally um, understand. It's, it's something which people have asked for. Yeah. And um, yeah. It's, yeah. I'm awesome, man. That's re that's really good. That's really good. That's really good. <laughs> and to just another inspirational quote from yourself because i know how much hard work you put you put in a lot of work and and i know that you do too come on <laughs> i know i know but this is this is this is bigging you up now this is this is uh, the, the reason why you're on this on the show is because most of the listeners that i do have and and you know do send in questions uh, are, are young artists young creatives that are trying to get into the industry and you know, they always ask me the same question. How are you doing it? What are you doing? How do you get motivated? You know, having a family, running everyday life as well, and then doing the hobbies on the side. Yeah. What would you, what would you say to them to like, just give them that extra push to say, yeah, what would you say? Right. If you enjoy it, it should naturally push you. And as soon as you have that idea, either write it down or do it straight away. Because if you think, oh, it's a great idea, and you try to keep it in the back of your mind, it will it will fade and it will disappear and you will never be able to get that idea again. So have a book. Uh, where's my small book? I don't have it right here. Have a book with you. I've got I've got one here just prep for him just yeah, in case. Literally, literally have have it either a notepad or if you've got, yeah everyone's got a phone. Oh yes, have a phone. Just one one bit on your notepad on your phone just has content ideas or if, it, if you've got a, uh, an idea to draw something, like just have it, just call it ideas for that specific thing. Mm. Jot it down because anytime I like, I want to create a video and I haven't got inspiration at that moment, 
I'll go, right, I'll look back on this and I'll, I'll write down in detail like what song to use if it's on TikTok or mm. um, who to reply to. And sometimes I, I get ideas like I'll go, all right, someone's already asked for Warwickshire, right, for, for my my thing. Like, okay, right. And I, I'm, I'm in my mind like, do I know one of your Warwickshire? And I've replied to that comment specifically and always engage with, if you do have an audience already, engage with the community, ask them for feedback. It was like with my business, you know, there was a very slow couple of months. I had no sales. So I asked all the influencers that we've used and actually asked for feedback from all customers. Always ask for feedback. Always put your ideas down. And just just do it. Seriously, like no, no one's stopping you. The only part, never give you excuses. The only person stopping you doing things is yourself. So honestly, break through it. Um, like if, if you're mad enough like me, what drives me every morning is a cold shower i actually i'm this mental guy because <laughs> the thing is that is my first challenge of the morning oh, actually I'm mm-hmm. getting up. first challenge of the morning as soon as i have a cold shower it's crazy because you have a thought of oh, i don't want to do it because you're thinking that it's it's gonna it's gonna hurt but it doesn't yeah. so like I'm, I'm in like 30 days in now that's awesome because it resets because... the system and it's good blood flow as well yeah like so many so many benefits of it but yeah uh, the re- reason to do it and it applies for all life is like it's not going to be as bad as you think. Mm-hmm. And when you do it, it's not going to hurt. Mm-hmm. It's not going to hurt anyone else. And the benefits are much bigger. So if mm. you haven't created videos yet, um, which I recommend doing, is just film it, put it out there, feedback. Or if it's a drawing, draw it out there, feedback. Mm. You get a, and if you incrementally, I think that's the word, yeah, incrementally yep. improving that 1% every day, over a year so your drawing would improve or your videos would improve i cringe at the stuff i was doing back in 2008 when i first made a video hopefully no one can find it it was me doing like Lord of the Rings parody. <laughs> i did a james bond spoof as well yeah. yes i've done everything like keep on going because you'll yeah. get back and be like wow i've come a long way yeah so definitely it. awesome oh man dude <laughs> thank you so much for jumping on uh oh, it's, it's always yeah. a pleasure and it's great to catch up with you and hopefully more that we're, we're gonna, we'll probably see each other another premiere another screening or another event which will be great to see as well oh, mate, it'll be uh, great. maybe last minute it'll be like hey come to this oh, shit. <laughs> yeah definitely it always is now always is now but uh no listen thank you so much guys make sure you go follow him all his links are in the description box and if you're living on uh, listening on streaming platforms please check out the description and go from there. But we are on YouTube and all other streaming platforms. And again, as always, feedback. How do we, you know, let me know what we can do to improve the podcast, what you guys want to listen to, questions you want to ask as well. And guys, I've got a, a, a giveaway on our Twitter. So go to our Twitter page, the Brothers Geek Cat Twitter page. Make sure you go check that out. But Tim, dude, thank you so much again for your time, dude. Oh, good Thanks for having me. Oh.